Hello, this is Chris Neal from South Plains College. Welcome back to my Pro Tools How To video series. This is the second video on basic automation editing. So we'll be covering some additional automation editing features and tools that we did not talk about in the last video. Some basic plugin automation, some additional copy and paste features. So as always, you will see my shortcuts at the bottom of the screen. If you need the conversion from Mac, which I will be using to PC, you can find that online or at the end of this video. Some useful shortcuts we'll be going over, some scrolling through auto playlists, adding breakpoints equal to the previous and next, nudging the nudge keys, and a couple paste special functions. Okay, back with part two of automation editing. First thing we're gonna look at is some helpful tools that you can use when using the Grabber tool to do graphic automation editing. So one of the features that I use quite often when doing graphical automation editing with a Grabber tool is the add breakpoint that is equal to the previous or next breakpoint feature. So let's look at that feature and how that works. We have two unequal breakpoints here, one at the end that is down low, so our fader is going down over the course of this track. So I don't want that, so I'm going to put a breakpoint here at the end that is equal to this one up here at the front. So I'm going to use this feature in Pro Tools that will allow me to add a breakpoint at the end that is equal to this one here at the front. So let me tell you how I remember these modifiers, and if it helps you, great. If it doesn't, you can create your own way. So if I want to create a breakpoint at this point that matches the breakpoint here, I think of this first breakpoint as the option key. So that's my option key. So I want to create a breakpoint to the right of this option key. And what modifier key is to the right of the option key? I use my left hand on the modifiers. So that is the command key. So I'm going to hold down option and command, and then I'm going to click right here, and that will create a breakpoint that is equal to the previous. So you can see this new breakpoint that got added is the same value as this one here. So if we look at this from the other way, I'm going to option click on that, and I'm going to drag this one down just for demonstration purposes. So now I want to create a breakpoint here that is equal to this breakpoint here at the end. So again, I'm thinking of this breakpoint at the end as the option key, and I'm going to think of what modifier is to the left of the option key. Okay, It would be the control. Unfortunately, in this situation, it's not control. It's the shift key. So I'm going to hold down option and shift and I'm going to click here at the beginning, and that will put a new breakpoint in here that is equal to the next breakpoint, and you see that happen there. So option shift to put a breakpoint equal to the next breakpoint value. So I use this all the time. For example, something like this, the beginning of the session, I've got a breakpoint, and now I have my fader slowly creeping up before the song even starts. I don't like that to happen. So I will hold down command and option because I want to put a breakpoint here that is equal to the previous. So now my fader is not moving when there's actually nothing happening under it, no reason for it to be moving. So some other reasons that I might use this technique. Okay, so let's say I have this section here. Now let me zoom in on it. So I want to create a little boost in volume here. So I'm going to holding down command and option. I want to create a breakpoint that is equal to the previous and option shift to make a breakpoint that is equal to the next. So I'm not messing with the automation on either side of this. So I'm going to get the tremor tool using F6. And then I will hover in between these two equal points and drag the volume up. So what happens is it creates two breakpoints just inside those two breakpoints that I just created. And let me zoom here. And those were brought up. So it creates this immediate transition upwards. So this would not be a good thing to have happen while there was audio playing. So we don't want to have immediate jumps in volume when there's audio playing or we will get clicks and pops. So whether it's up or down, we want to avoid those drastic jumps in volume. So in addition to the pops and clicks that can happen, I personally don't like to have the faders on my control surface jumping all of a sudden. It's just kind of jarring. So I would rather things move smoothly in and out of a transition. So starting fresh here, I'm going to hold down command and option and create breakpoints here. And this is my transition time. How much time do I want this automation to transition between the lower level and the higher level? So holding down command and option. Command and option again because I have no other changes down the line. So here's my transition time. If I just do what I did before and I grab with the tremor tool and drag up, I'm going to get two new breakpoints created in between that. That's not what I want. I don't want that jump. So what I'm going to do is hold option 
and drag up. And that creates a transition between the breakpoints. So it drags up these two interior breakpoints and creates a transition between those points and the other points that I had created. So again, I'm going to hold down Command and Option and put in two breakpoints at the beginning and Option Shift to two breakpoints at the end to create these transition points. Let me zoom out. So let's look at it and do it one more time. So let's say I wanted to take this little section and make a change. So I'm going to hold down Command Option and Option Shift and a little smaller transition time because I want to be back down for that little bit. Hold Option and drag up. So I get my nice little smooth transitions in and out of that change. So as I proceed through my mix, I can hold option and, and make changes. If I don't hold option, that's what happens. But again, as I proceed through my mix, I can make little changes to these fills that are coming in and out of the mix and have them transition smoothly. Now let's look at the pencil tool and the triangle version of that. Uh, these three tools all work based on the grid value we have set. I'm going to turn on the grid mode for my edit mode, but the grid that I'm talking about is what my grid setting is here. So it's going to use this value. So if I wanted a fast change, I might set it to sixteenths and then draw in and we see a change in that triangle every sixteenth note. So now if I go into play, you can see this cutoff value here oscillating back and forth in a very quick fashion. So to see that happening. So let's stop. Let's change my grid mode. Let's say I want to make it a shorter, so I'll undo and let's go to a quarter note and draw that triangle again. So you see how these triangles are spaced in quarter note and my cutoff is moving much slower, oscillating back and forth between those two. So undo that. Let me move this window out of the way a little bit so we can see a little bit better. So where we click and how far we drag up or down affects how uh, affects this triangle drawing there. So let me click up here at the top and drag down to the bottom and we can see it's going to oscillate through the full scale. So you can see that cutoff going all the way from the top to the bottom, right? So again, where you start your click and how far you drag up or down kind of affects that. So if I wanted a real low oscillation, low in value, I can drag that. Let me see it oscillates low. So now let's look at the square version. Similar things, I'm gonna click and drag on this macro four, which is affecting the resonance of this filter. And we can see that it oscillates from really quick. So not smoothly, it's just jumping between those two values. So again, depending on where I click and how far I drag up, I can create a shallower or deeper oscillation between two values or smaller distance between two values. So you can see a couple examples here. We'll hit play and we can see it jump between those two values there. We'll undo and let's just change our grid size to one bar and let's just look at that real quick. So you'll want to spend a little time on your own experimenting with this and seeing how this tool works and functions. So let's go back to this triangle. I drew a triangle on a one bar grid, but I don't want the peaks to land on the bar. I want them to land in the middle of the bar. So I'm gonna use a feature called nudging. You can nudge all kinds of things in Pro Tools. So I'm gonna highlight this automation and I am gonna go to the nudge value right here below the grid. And I am going to choose a half note and then I'm gonna use the nudge controls of plus and minus. So I'm going to hit minus and nudge it back one half note. And now they land in the middle of the bar instead of the beginning of the bar. So now I can get my one bar oscillations, but instead of them landing on the grid, the bar grid, they're landing in the middle of the bar. So the oscillation is a bar long, but I nudged it back to offset that oscillation. So again, the nudge keys were the plus and minus on the number pad. All right, so we've covered the triangle tool and the square tool. So the one that's left is the random tool. So we don't use this one very often, but there are some times when it comes in really handy. So let's select the random tool. I've got this talk box on my electric guitar, and I just want to randomize the val and format uh, functions. So I'm going to go to the button below auto on the plugin and I'm going to click and that opens up the plugin automation window over on the left hand side. We see a list of the features and we find the vowel and the format and I'm going to click on them and hit the add button in the middle and that moves them over to the right side, which is the side of the automatable functions of a plugin. So we see a little light appear next to those and every plugin is a little bit different regarding that light feature. So I go over to the track view 
selector, and now that plugin appears in this list, and I can choose vowel. And now I can go get my pencil tool set to random. I can click and drag and create some random changes. Okay, so we're on a half note grid. I don't really, I want it to go faster, so I'm gonna change to an eighth note grid, click and drag, and we can see how it just randomizes values and have it go crazy. So I might wanna do the same thing on the format. If I did, I would can click over here, change to format and click and drag. And again, I can change how much it's randomizing by how far up and down I drag when I do that. So we can control how often it makes a change by our grid value and how drastic of a change by how far we drag up and down. So let's have a quick listen. So let's look at a couple paste special features. So I've got some automation on this electric guitar here, and I want to repeat this automation throughout the track. So what I'm going to do is in grid mode, I'm going to select a bar. And you can see up in the edit, I have one bar selected. I'm going to copy that selection, and now I want to paste it to the rest of the track. So I'm going to extend my selection out to the rest of the track by typing in 9 for the length of my edit selection. So now I have 9 bars on my selection, and I had one bar that I copied. So I'm going to go to the Edit menu and select Paste Special and Repeat to Fill Selection. Sorry, remember your shortcuts there. That one is Command Option V. So I'm going to use Repeat to Fill Selection, and it's going to paste that one bar to the rest of my selection. Pretty nice. So let's do this one more time. Let's go to the vowel and we've got this random section here. And let's say I like how it randomized during one bar, but not the whole thing. I just want to repeat this bar. So I want random, but a repeating random. So I can copy that bar, okay, from anywhere. Select my time range. This time I'm just dragging to select. And then use my shortcut, Command Option V. And voila, I get randomized pattern. So very cool. Okay, let's look at one more paste special function. And let's say I really like this randomized pattern that I have here, and rather than trying to recreate it, which you couldn't do using random, so I wanna copy this and I wanna paste it onto another parameter. So I wanna go up here to my synth, and I wanna paste that to my macro four, which was set to resonance for filter. So if I just copy and I just use the normal paste, command V, we see what happens. It says you can't do that. They're different types. You can't paste into this. So this is where you need the paste special. So I'm gonna to go to edit, paste special, and to current automation type, and choose that. And again, that's command control V. Choose that, and we see how it pasted my randomness from my vowel automation playlist up into the macro four playlist for my synth. Pretty awesome, huh? So I just want to add on one more thing, automating a send. So we didn't cover that earlier, so I want to add on how to automate the send. So I've got a delay send on this electric guitar, so let's hear a little bit of it. All right, so I want to have a little bit of a delay repeat happen on this last little hit of this before it goes into that break, just to kind of fill that gap. So I'm going to go into slip mode here. So again, I'm not using any new technique, just the parameter that I'm automating. So I'm going to go to the track view selector, and I'm going to find that send long delay, and I'm going to pull up the level. And I already am sending a little bit to it, which I don't really want. So I'm going to just turn the send fader all the way down. So I'm going to find that last little bit. So let me zoom in on that last hit that I want. What's here? Yep, I want that last little bit here. So I'm going to use my techniques of command, option, and click in front to create a transition in and a transition out. Now I'm going to hold down option, drag up, and drag up again. That's probably more than I want, but I want you to hear it, so let's hear it. So maybe I want a little bit of this delay on the guitar throughout the song, so I can option and drag up and turn up the delay before and after. I need a break point over here to be able to use the option 
feature. So hold Option, Tremor Tool, and I can drag that up. And let's hear it. So there you go, that's how you can automate a send. Uh, you might also want to use that on a vocal to put a delay repeat on the last word uh, of a line and have it repeat into a gap where the vocalist is not singing. So lots of uses, and there you go. Thanks for watching.